what is going on everybody welcome back to battle cage now been out for a while yes i know but you know what i had a plan i wanted to let the few events of 2022 play out to, so i can see um how the vibes are going and you know because we got burned uh, last year if you guys remember uh beginning of 2021 we got burned so bad so i don't want to repeat the mistakes so i let you know let the things play out but you know what? UFC 271 is officially tomorrow. I know I'm late to the party. A lot of people are already breaking down and giving you videos. But you know what? Who cares if you're wrong, right? Who cares if you made a video and you're wrong? Who cares? So, you know what? I'm not going to claim that I'm always right. Not at all, right? Not at all. This is why I even changed my uh, original uh, YouTube where I claimed to be an MMA oracle. Hell no. Chill, bro. Chill, right? There's no such thing. Um, you can do your best. You can do uh, you can study the tape and whatnot and uh, hope for the best. But without um, getting into all this uh, mambo and jumbo, let's just say UFC tomorrow and I'm excited. So let's not waste any time and um, let's dive right into it. I'm going to open up ESPN uh, to help me with um, this review. And I'm going to be toggling back and forth between that and our good old friend Topology. Got the event already pulled up over here. We currently have 14 uh, scheduled fights. As of uh, as of right now, yesterday, we had 15. We did lose one. Um, what did we lose? We lost Alex Perez and Matt Schnell. Uh, Perez missed weight, and I guess Matt Schnell did not want to um, compete. So... That's a bummer. Uh, actually, was very confident with Alex Perez. He was like minus 400. Had him in a parlay, so that's already a virgin. That's already strapped. But anyway, 14 fights. Uh, can't complain, right? Let's just uh, go. We're going to go straight into the main event. We're not going to waste any time because that's what the show is about. We're not wasting any time. Anyway, Israel Adesanya, the style bender, taking on Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker. Um... Right off the bat, you see the size discrepancy, even at their face-offs. Um, we saw the size discrepancy. This video doesn't do it justice, right? Um, there's a big... Uh, four inches is a lot. And, um, you know, it's it's just it's just massive. You know what I'm saying? And um, when a fighter has to look up and versus down, it's a big difference. Anyway, uh, in terms of reach, massive seven-inch reach advantage, again, for Israel Adesanya. Um, he's just kind of like built for this um, middleweight division. I mean, he's like almost untouchable here. And I, you know, I'm really high on him. Um, look at the strikes landed per minute. Bobby Knuckles slightly more. Uh, significant takedown. Uh, significant striking accuracy. Style Mander wins there 53.1. He's extremely accurate. Uh, Bobby Knuckles is not no way a slouch 45.22. Um, you, you can see the takedown uh, average, 0.64 for Robert Whitaker, and I have yet to see Izzy take anybody down. Um, let's see, anything else? Than that? That's pretty much it. Let's let's hover over, over to Topology and quickly take a look at what's going on in the last five fights. Uh, Izzy has a little blemish. That's because he was, you know, overzealous, if you want to say that. And he jumped into a upper division light heavyweight division which i don't think he has any business there um i think he's perfect he's been you know it's like you know the 185 is his division and i think he should stay there i think he's he's very comfortable there um and i know he's saying he's getting bored but it is what it is it just rain rain man be the king and just be the greatest 185 ever uh so that's like a li little blemish you know what i'm saying and john blackwoods did his thing over there and i did say that uh, I had John Blackwoods over there. A lot of people who um, who are around me, who were in my circle, they will vouch for that. He's taking on Bobby Knuckles. His last uh, blemish is to Israel Adesanya two years ago when they fought originally, and um, he got knocked out. So since then, ever since he came back, Darren Till, who I don't think is a true 185er, and I don't think he's a... 170, so he's like in between, and I don't think he's really that good, to be honest. Um, then he fought Jared Cannonier, who is fighting on this card, and I don't really think he's that good either. But anyway, he does have 
uh, tremendous power, and um, seems to be like a cool guy, right? And then he fought Kevin Gastelum, and I knew that was not going to happen, right? So, yeah, he did his thing, and, you know, Kevin Gastelum, a notable opponent, but he's kind of bad. Um, he's been losing a lot lately. I think the Kevin Gastelum that was Kevin Gastelum died in his fight with Israel Adesanya. Um, yeah, and that was right... Oh, that was even before that. Um, that was even before. But anyway, look what happened. He beats uh, Robert Whitaker. He fights Yoel Romero. Um, that was a fun fight, if you remember. And then he fights Paul Costa. Obliterated that dude. Um, he, like I said, has that little blemish. And then he bounced back against Marvin Vittori, who's um, who's a notable opponent, opponent in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's just. It's really hard to beat Israel Adesanya. So, if you want to know how the fight is going to go with Israel Adesanya, look at Marvin Tori. Marvin Tori is probably the closest uh, fighter that I can compare Robert Whitaker to. Both have, you know, power in their hands. They're not afraid to kick. And they are really don't mind going to the ground. But Israel is good, man. Israel is so good. Now... It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what game plan Robert Whitaker comes here. Um, we can say right now, if it's a stand up fight, Israel wins ten out of ten. There's almost no chance for I mean, there's always a punch. Just, so you know what? Let's let's give let's give Bobby Knuckles some respect. I actually like love Bobby Knuckles, just not in the spot. And I'm gonna say Bobby Knuckles uh, versus Israel Adesanya, and out of ten fights, Israel wins. I would say 7.5. So that's how over over 7.5. That's where I kind of see it. Um, yeah, no, because I do have some respect for uh, Robert Whitaker in this spot, but I have tremendous uh, respect uh, for Robert Whitaker everywhere else. I'd like to see Robert Whit uh, Whitaker versus Marvin Vittori. That would be an interesting fight. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to say that Israel Adesanya is just too big uh, for this division. He's too... Uh, agile for this this uh, for this division and he's just he's just the last style bender man he's he's awesome that's pretty much all i can say he packs all the physical attributes you want in a fighter and i think he's gonna get the job done again um i wish i can say more about this fight but that's pretty much where i do see it uh as of right now we're gonna look back on the live uh, odds we're gonna use as you can see i'm logging in so i'm not using any bullshit I have deposited a hundred bucks in here um, because I don't keep money in my account. I, for those of you who are new to the channel, as soon as I win the money, I take it out. I don't keep it in the account. I like to keep a low balance so I'm not tempted to play. So as of right now, Israel Adesanya, the last style bender is minus two ninety. The line has moved since yesterday. It was two sixty five. So it is jumping a bit. I would not be surprised that after the weigh-ins, this is why I'm making this video right now, before the, uh, I'm sorry, the weigh-ins happen, before the f a ceremonial weigh-ins, uh, which is going to take place tonight, I'm telling you right now, the line should be moving slightly up, because people are going to be watching it, they're going to look at the body, they're going to look how he's going to look dehydrated, and they're going to look at the massive size dis discrepancy for, um for Whitaker and they're gonna jump on Izzy's train once again so without further ado I'm gonna say that I am officially on Izzy money line um I'm also considering the fight goes to distance how will the fight end points is minus 125 so that's a good that's a good one um over under is at four and a half if that's why they kind of give you minus 132 you know, Whitaker, if he if he's going to jump um, straight into the fight, that's going to hurt him. Um, and Israel Adesanya, he's, um, he's not the one to initiate uh, the, um, the aggressive tactic, right? He's not going to be the one. Um, Israel is very patient, and Israel is very patient, and... He's not going to jump. He's not going to initiate that aggressive approach. So if Robert Whitaker decides to chill, he's going to chill. So um, the over 132 is not a bad spot in here because, like I said, uh, Bobby Knuckles cannot come in with the same game plan. He just he just can't, right? So, yeah. So either or, I'm kind of fine with. Um, you know, 
I, I always want to get the best value, but I, I just I just want to win. So for me, I'm going to be on Team Izzy. And then, you know, the narrative is that everybody and their mother is on Izzy. Well, what do you want me to say? I mean, you know, just... I can't, I'll be a liar if I told you I think Whitaker is going to win. Can he win? Yeah, absolutely. Will he win? I don't know. The best value is the fight goes the distance or over one four, uh, over four and a half, in my opinion. Um, because then Robert Whitaker can say, I did, like he said in his um, interviews, right? I did my best. And if I do my best... I'm not going to be ashamed. And him going five rounds with Israel Asanya and not getting knocked out a second time is an is a improvement in my book. So the value pick is four and a half. Money line is Israel Asanya. For this video, I am going to disclose that I already have a parlay with Israel Adesanya. And I'm going to reveal the parlay at the end. And for that purpose, because I'm going to put a parlay together with you guys, I'm going to take the over four and a half. And I'm... Pretty okay with that. Okay, let's move down along. We got the uh, Black Beast Derek Lewis taking on Tai Tuivasa. Uh, and boy, my heart here is absolutely torn apart. I love both of these guys. I've been high on Derek Lewis. You guys know that. Um, played him pretty, pretty heavily in his last fight. Uh, he was the last leg of a seven-legger. I uh, was very confident, didn't cash out, and Derek Lewis is the man. Um, Tai Tuvasa is just such a fun fighter to watch, but um, I got to keep it real, man. I'm going to go with the Black Beast. Um, Derek Lewis here, I just, you know, I think his massive experience is amazing. Um, and the level of competition, uh, let's dissect here. Ties to us, the last loss was to Sergey Spivak. Um, and you know Sergey Spivak is a heavy uh, pressure wrestler type of dude. And then he fought Steven Struve. I think almost any middleweight can beat St Steven Struve um, at that point, to be honest. He fought somebody named Harry Hansucker. Okay, no surprise. D Derek Lewis can knock him out as well. He fought Greg Hardy. That was a pretty interesting fight. And um, he did get hurt by uh, Greg Hardy. And, you know, but Greg Hardy made a massive mistake. He he dove in and he got clipped. Um, Derek Lewis is not like that, right? Derek Lewis is patient, uh, believe it or not. And when Derek Lewis un unloads, it's different. He, he doesn't come in open-handed. Derek Lewis comes in hands forward. Bam, bam, bam combinations, right? He's just brawling at that point. The way the way Greg Hardy came in, he came in kind of like open, going for a punch, and he got clipped. So I don't see Derek Lewis making that mistake. And then this was a good this was a good knockout. Augusta Sakai. I never did like Augusta Sakai, but uh if you ask me, Derek Lewis knocks him out too. So then you gotta look at what Derek Lewis is doing. Now he fought Eli Latifi, and man, honestly. I'll be honest with you. That was, I think that was also in Houston, and I had a lot of money on Derek Lewis. I think I had eighteen hundred dollars on Derek Lewis. That was like the beginning of me playing, so I was playing recklessly, um, and I had eighteen hundred dollars in Derek Lewis. And um, to be honest, I kind of low key thought he lost this fight. Anyway, he fought Al Alexei Olenek, and my dumbass was doubting him, but um, yeah, he killed Alexei Olenek. And then he fought Curtis Bladis. Now, here's the now. You got to ask yourself. Now, again, he did get caught. He caught clean, caught, pow, right? Um, so you got to ask yourself, can Curtis Bladis beat Tai Tuivasa? Imagine Tai Tuivasa fighting C Curtis Bladis. And yes, Derek Lewis was a massive underdog, like plus 245 underdog. Uh, everybody was high on Curtis Bladis. Um but that power is undeniable, and um, just feel like, just feel like power for power. Derek Lewis is just a beast, as the nickname suggests. And um, yeah, I really think Curtis Bladis is better than Tai Tuivasa. And again, Curtis Bladis did a big mistake. He dove in for a takedown. He got clipped. Now, is Tai Tuivasa gonna do that? No, he wants to sling and bang. So. 
I don't know if you want to slang and bang with Derek Lewis. You know, now, um, he did get beat by Cyril Gaon, but Cyril Gaon and Tai Tuvasa is like, you can't even put them at the same, in the same conversation. It's not going to happen, right? It was a systematic breakdown uh, for Derek Lewis, and Derek Lewis, you know, you know, he says he put too much pressure, but there was no way he's going to win that fight. Um, it's unless he charges at Cyril Gaon and, and clips him, right? Um, because the way Cyril Gaon fights is very loose on his feet and systematic breakdown, systematic breakdown. And um, he even tried to do that to um, to Francis Ngannou. Didn't work so well because Francis Ngannou said, I can wrestle, bitch. And yeah, that was the, the end of that story. Um, and then he fought Chris Dawkins, who's like, you know, to me, would be the best comparison to Taito Uvasa, um, to be quite honest with you. Um, yeah, that's where I would pretty, pretty much say. And if, if Taito Uvasa thinks he can slang and bang with the Black Beast, man, when he charges you, you're going to get smoked on. Now, he is 37 years old, but for heavyweights, that's, that's quite all right. We're okay with that. You know, we know heavyweight boys actually get better. They get more seasoned um, as they get older. It's an interesting phenomenon with them. So 37 years old is actually like the prime uh, age for a true heavyweight contender. And I'm totally okay with that age. And, um, you know, he, he is the knockout king officially. Uh, he has 26 wins, 8 losses. Um He's six foot three to six two, so just a slight height advantage, and you know four inches uh, in in a, in a reach. So seventy nine to seventy five, I think that's significant. Uh, but when you compare the power, as much as I love Bam Bam tied to Ivasa, and I really do think he's super entertaining when he's fighting these bumps and he's knocking them out with shoe shoeies. But man, I would be a liar if I I would just. Honestly, be a liar to say that I see value in Tai Tuivasa. I love Tai Tuivasa. He is the younger guy. So his reflexes are probably going to be good. But Derek Lewis, man, that power, I've just respected too much uh, to go against it. And I refuse to think that he's going to drop the ball in Houston again. Can he drop the ball notoriously being Derek Lewis? Possibly. But, man, I think he's going to fight. I think it's going to be fight. And when you put two heavyweights like that together i'm gonna bet on the power if they're slinging and banging i'm gonna go with Derek lewis that's that's pretty much where i stand that's pretty much uh it for that cool main event um so i'm gonna go Derek lewis um and Derek lewis has to win with a, with a knockout i do like the money line alone um the knockout is not juicy enough for me it's only minus 120, so I might as well take the money line because I just, who cares? Maybe he's going to grind it up to a decision, but who cares, right? Um, Low-key, uh, low-key, right? If you want to hedge this in any way possible, you want to, I mean, really, really hedge. Over 1.5, which is... outside the narrative but if you want to hedge in any way i would consider over 1.5 and i will go on a disclaimer i have one parlay with the over because just in case right that's the best value and um also don't always listen to uh you know people that tells you there's value there's even me like fuck me right uh just because i think it's value doesn't mean you have to agree Always come with a cynical approach to everything. That's just my true advice with um, any wagering. Um, so, yeah. Consider 1.5 in a small little uh, world of uh, hedging. Um, but they should be killing each other in the first round. Um, but we'll see. You know, stranger things have happened. So, let's move down along. We got Derek Brunson. The blunt Derek Brunson. Uh, versus Jared Cannon here. And I'm going to be honest. I told you guys off the bat. I'm not too. I'm not too keen on uh, Jared Cannon here. You know the killer gorilla. I do think he has tremendous power. And look. He knocks out David Branch. He knocks out. And if you ask me. I think Derek, Derek Brunson also beats Derek Branch. He took out Anderson Silva. A, you know an old. 
Anderson Silva, and I think Derek Brunson could have taken him out. Um, he took out Jack Hermanson, and that was a good fight, so he did get my respect over there. And that's where the thing started kind of going his way. And then he fights, you know, Bobby Knuckles, and boy, I mean, seriously, guys, you guys, give me free money over there because um, anyone back in Jared Kenyon against Bobby Knuckles, you're out of your mind. So I took that um, with 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 great pride and full confidence. And then he fights um, Kelvin Gastelum, and this is the fight you should have won. And look, he went to the decision with him. And I thought the fight is going to go the distance. And that's exactly what I called. And um, yeah, boom, won that. Now, here, Derek Brunson, Jared Cannonier is going to lose if he goes the distance. Just off the bat. So look right away what the over is. Probably two and a half at this point. And the over two and a half at plus 106 is not bad. You just have to consider Jared Cannon here to um, knock out Derek Brunson because um, Derek Brunson could be looked at as a bit of chinny kind of guy. So you could either take Jared Cannon here if you're high on him in this spot, uh, which I'm not too high on him, and I don't want to bet Jared Cannon here. I do want to bet Der Derek Brunson because if the fight goes on the ground, uh, Jared Cannon here is fish out of water. And I just think Derek Brunson is a much better, superior wrestler uh, compared to Jared Cannonier. But, you know, I still respect Jared Cannonier's power because I think he's powerful as shit. Now, he is up there in age. Um, he's 37 years old. He's, uh, he's on the cusp of being 38. Um, and Derek Brunson is already 38. So, you know, you got, you know, two 38-year-olds basically fighting. Um, not saying anything to Brunson, I just, what worried me, I was really good on Brunson, and then, you know, he tells me that he only has two fights left, so, there's, how much motivation does that show me, you know, so, I don't like that, you know, win or lose, he said he got two fights left, so, that kind of scared me off, so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, Jerry Cannonier goes out there and says, well, here's your, here's your first fight, clink, so that's actually a good position to be on Jared Cannonier, which then nullifies the two and a half. Uh, but again, I don't know. Um, I would probably say don't play this um, if you guys don't know. If you do know, if you're high end on Jared Cannonier, go with the money line right now. If you're, I'm disappointed, Derek Brunson. If he didn't ever said that he's, you know, if he didn't disclose his mentality, I probably would still be high on Derek Brunson. The fact that he told me that he just has two fights left scared me away from that position. So I'm officially out of that position, okay? Um, yeah, moving on along. Alex Hernandez and Renato Moicano is now on... Oh, no, Kyler Phillips. Let me see over here. Um, they kind of have it wrong. Although I did hear, I think they got, I think they got bumped, right? Um, maybe I don't know. Let's just go with, let's go with this one. Uh, Kyler Phillips and Marcelo Rojo. Actually, they should have it. They should have it, right? Um, <laughs> uh, there you go. The main card, Jerry Cannon here. Alex Hernandez. Yes, so Alex Hernandez did bump Kyler Phillips. Um, so let's talk about um, Kyler. Uh, let's talk about Hernandez. Let's talk about Hernandez then. Okay, so. Uh, Alex Hernandez, 13-4. Uh, and four, Taking on Renato Moicano, 15-4. Um, size, uh, height, slight advantage to Renato Mocano. Wait, did Alex Hernandez come in 167? No, right? The hell? Or did he? Hmm. 
No, I don't think so. Um, I think he made weight. I don't know why it says one unless whatever. Let's just. It's a 155 fight. Supposedly reach the same. Uh, leg reach is going to Renato Moicano. Um, yeah, Renato Moicano is awesome. I think he's good. I just don't know how I feel in this spot. To be honest, let's go over here. Um, significant strike landed per minute is going to go to Marcano. So I'm going to keep be, be very, very honest in this spot. If you are even considering this fight, um, the value, and again, be very, be very weary of that whole value concept, okay? The value is on Alex Hernandez. In my opinion, at plus 144, uh, but the volume is on Moicano. So the longer the fight goes, the more chances for Moicano, and the shorter the fight, ex an explosive fight, is going to go toward Alex Alex Hernandez, okay? Um, I am leading Alex Hernandez. It's a good spot for him. It's a fight he should win. Um, not saying that he will, but it's a fight that he should win. Um, so my pick personal is Alex Hernandez and do I want to play him? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, but I do see some, some value on Alex Hernandez. Let's move along, um, down and our next fight is Bobby Green, which I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to support Bobby Green here. Okay. Um, I think the volume alone is um, much better. Let's see over here if I'm right. And I should be right. Significant strikes landed per minute. As you can see, slight edge for Bobby Green. Significant accuracy, which is very important to me. is 54. He's going to touch him up. Uh, take down average, again, 1.45. Should the fight need to go to the ground? Bobby Green, again, I like that very much. Um, and my takedown accuracy is again toward Bobby Green, and I like Bobby Green. That's it. I'm gonna. Uh, ever since you know Nasrid got exposed, I don't think he's um, that good. To be honest, that's that's pretty much. I think just volume alone beats um, beats Nasrid and Hasbrot, unless Hasbrot knocks out Bobby Green, which would be a path to victory. Um, again, I think Bobby Green is durable enough. So, we're going to be on Team Green, you know. That's pretty much kind of, I uh, have nothing else to say here. I, you know, the experience is, I mean, tremendous ex experience. And, yeah, Bobby Green has dropped the ball multiple times. Multiple times. And um, he could argue the fact that if he wasn't stupid, excuse me, he could have won the last couple of fights. Um, The Fizia fight, he could could have won he could have won um he knocked out ala quinta um i should have been all over bobby green on that position let me see what the line was he was a minus 190 i should have been all over bobby green shame on me for not and then um yeah he could have won he could have won physio fight um if he did he was smart enough he could have won tiago um yeah i think he should win this fight in my opinion um, you know, he drops the ball a lot. Um, if you look at him getting finished, when was the last time he got finished? And, um, the last time he got finished was by Dustin Portier, uh, in 2016. So it's been a long time. Uh, his fights usually go the distance. So you could argue that maybe the round props over two and a half, is a good spot, and I'm not gonna say it's not. Um, it is. It's actually, it's actually a decent spot for Bobby Green, uh, type of fight and Nasrin and Hasparov. So, the over two and a half is great. I'm just gonna be supporting Bobby Green and call it a day. Um, yeah, let's move down the line. So that's the main card. Um, obviously, I mean the the, the last three fights, right? Jerry King and Brunson, Derek Lewis, Ty Tuivasa, Izzy, Robert Whitaker. What an amazing um, card that is. Um, Bobby Green should be entertaining. I think it should be an entertaining fight. Okay. 
In the prelim section, we have our Andre Arlovsky taking Jared Cannonier. I'm sorry, Jared Vendera. Sorry, guys. I'm like already uh, losing it. I'm, what, 30 minutes in? And I'm, I want to finish this fast. Because um, the prelims are actually, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Now, Arlovsky Vendera, um, you got a 43 year old Andre Arlovsky taking on Jared Cannonier. But look at his last five fights, he only lost one. And that was a rear naked choke to Tom Aspinall, who's um, a contender, who's headlining um, a card of his own very, very soon, who I'm going to be high on. I'm um, just giving you a projection in the future. He's going to be giving up one inch of height and three inch of reach. Jerry Cannonier is uh, the younger fighter. Uh, is the younger fighter. Uh, but look, uh, you know, look at his record. It's 12 and 6. That's kind of atrocious, to be honest. Um, so... Yeah, and um, he's he lost to Sergey Spivak. No surprise. He beat just a tougher, who's way smaller than him, and then he got destroyed by Alexander Romanov. Man, I don't know. I I think Andre Arlovsky has been squeezing these low level uh, fighters. Um, you know, I wouldn't put too much on it, but um, you know, forty three years old. You know, you start to worry at this point, but man, the guy's been doing it. He's a, he's a professional, um, and as long as he doesn't get clipped and keeps the fight the way he's been doing it, and just riding a unanimous decision, point game. Um, he beat Carlos Felipe. He beat Chase Sherman. He beat Tanner Bowser, right? Um, and he beat Felipe Lance. So he's taking all these newcomers. And you could argue that, you know, Carlos Felipe might be a slight better than Jared Vendera. So, man, I got to go with the OG. Would I play him? I'm scared, but I want to play him. But I'm just going to, like, pass on. But if if I was taking a fantasy parlay, I'll probably include him, okay? Um, so, yeah. I'm going to go with the OG, Andre Arlovsky. Um, not going to play him, to be honest. And then we got Roxanne Mataferi. That's her retirement fight versus Casey O'Neill. Um, I will be agreeing with the bookies, okay? Minus 400 is where you got to be in this fight because a high-motivated prospect versus an OG who's retiring, she got to go out there and kill uh, Roxanne. And I love Roxanne, right? I've been I've been telling you guys I love Roxanne for a minute, but... um. Man, she got no hands, and um, and I know she hasn't been finishing like a decade, but this is written all over for history, right? If you're going to go out, you're going to go out on a stretcher. Um, so I would love to see Casey O'Neill knock the shit out of Roxanne because Roxanne has no hands. And if Roxanne thinks she's going to take Casey O'Neill on the ground, well, guess what? Guess what? You're going to get submitted because Casey O'Neill, man, she got submission games. All right, she got submission game. She got two submissions under her belt, so don't play with her. And if uh, the fight got to get nasty and dirty, she can squeeze out a, a, a decision. As you can see, she's a well-rounded fighter. I really like, um, I really like her. Now you are gonna say, oh, she beat Shayna Dobson, blah blah blah, garbage fighter. She beat Lara Procopia, garbage fighter. Um, well, at that time, Lara Procopia was a uh, was a seven and one, six and zero fighter. So she was also a prospect, right? And um, she's standing rear naked choke. How crazy is that? So yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I love Roxanne. I wish her a great retirement. And um, I'm gonna go with the young buck. And I'm I'm actually gonna say that if I feel the way I feel, and I feel the way I feel, how will the fight end? I'm going to say, will the fight go to distance? No. Because I really want to see Roxanne finished. Like, honestly, honest to God. And because of that, the only way I can lose that, if Roxanne grinds this out or if Casey allows Roxanne to grind this fight out. So, I'm going to hope Casey O'Neill wants to finish this fight and make a name for herself of an OG. And because of that, I'm going to officially take the fight will not go to distance. Um, that's my, but if, if Casey O'Neill was like minus two something, I'll be all over that money line. Um, and that's just honest to God. Um, 
Um, honest to God. Okay, significant strike landed per minute, 5.48. She's going to touch her up. Okay, uh, her accuracy is 68. There you go. And her takedown average is 50%. Takedown average is 3. So, man, who's going to be taking who down? Um, Casey O'Neill should be destroying Roxanne Modafferi. Um, I love Roxanne. Roxanne should have been out a long time ago. But Casey, girl, kill Roxanne. That's all I'm going to say. Just kill her because I'm hoping that you do. Moving down the line. Um, all right. Who we got? We got the Matrix. Kyler Phillips versus Marcella Rojo. Um. Geez, this guy's already four thirty minus four thirty something. He'll be the biggest um favorite uh in here. Kyler Phillips. Let me see. He was up. Mm, Kyler Phillips. Minus four twenty. He's only climbing up. I do want to take Kyler Phillips. Uh God, I want to take Kyler Phillips, but Jesus, look at this. Minus four twenty is disgusting. So as much as I want to I mean, so the only way for me to win is to say the fight does not go to distance, right? I don't want the fight to go to distance. I want Kyla Phillips to win. If he's such a favorite to win, he should be killing Rojo. And you know what? This is this is a this is a massive gamble, which I don't feel like it. I'm gonna see if I need it. As of right now, I have, I'm I'm a plus not, I'm plus nine seventeen. Let me see if I need the extra juice. I might want to consider because. Um, minus 220 is not bad. Um, minus 420 is just not worth the, the risk. Um, you know what I mean? I like 420. I just don't like this 420. Um, so Kyler Phillips, let's take a look at him. Profile wise, he should be up here, right? Kyler Phillips. Okay. Size 5858, bantamweight fight. Um, reach almost the same. Uh, significant strikes landed per minute, almost the same. The accuracy is going to go to Kyler Phillips. Takedown average is going to favor Kyler Phillips. And takedown accuracy is pretty much kind of uh, the same. So, on paper, it's a pretty even fight, but don't get don't get it twisted. Now, I know Rojo is uh, coming in with that experience. Uh, let me see. How much is he? He's a 33-year-old uh, fighter, which is not bad. But, you know, you in the bantamweight now, you start getting a little shaky. Uh, an Argentine fighter, uh, you know, 16-7 and seven record. Not too bad, not too good. In the last five fights, he got submitted by John Constaneda, who just submitted um, Miles John and completely ruined my parlay and my happiness. Thanks, John Constaneda. Anyway, I should have been aware of that. And then he got Destroyed by Charles Jordan uh, 10 months ago. Um, so, I feel like if you touch him up enough, you're going to beat him. Um, I think Kyler Phillips can beat him. He's, you know, very explosive. He's very talented. In the last five fights, look what he did. He KO'd uh, this dude. He KO'd. Uh, he got a um, unanimous decision against Gabriel uh, Silva. Uh, KO'd. Cameron Elsie, unanimous decision against uh, Dong Yong, and that was a good fight. You know what I'm saying? I really was, I wanted him to win against uh, Sadong Yong, so that was awesome. And then, you know, ugh, disgusting, disgusting. I don't want to talk about it, but um, ugh, I don't even know. I don't even know. I was high on Kyler Phillips in that fight, and then they gave it to Paiva. I think it was bullshit, um, if you ask me. So, I think he bounces back. Um, it's a good bounce back fight. So, Kyla Phillips should win. Like I said, I just don't want to jump on that minus 420 and get burned. But if I have to, I have to. Let's see how much I can find. Now, next fight, okay. Carlos Olberg versus Fabio Charant is one of my uh, official plays. Where are we? This one. We talked. Them. Oh, Alex Perez, a match nail fight has been scrapped. We already talked about that. Uh, William Knight and Maxim Grisham. Is that the next fight? Let's see. We're gonna. I'm following the UFC module right here. So, Carlos Olberg, right? That's what I thought. That's who we're gonna be talking about. Okay. Um, 
I gotta go with Carlos Olberg. I think he just underestimated his uh, last opponent um, in Anchukui, Kennedy Anchukui. He's just just as big as this dude. He was six foot five with a better reach. And um, but if you watch the technique, wow! I mean, the body shots, face plants. This guy is good. Okay, leg kicks and everything. This guy is good. I think it was it was, it was a good learning experience for um, th this guy Carlos, and I think he he's gonna bounce back. A perfect opponent, uh, Fabio Charant, which I'm not very high on. Let's see what's going on uh, for these two guys. Um, Fabio Charant, he has lost his two fights. He loses this one. Goodbye, uh, the Water Buffalo. He got submitted by Alonzo Mainfield, and he got KO'd by uh, William Knight. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be totally, totally honest with you guys. I am pretty high on Carlos Olberg to the point where I don't even want to waste your time. I think stylistically speaking, he should be a problem for Fabio Sharon. You could argue, well, what if Fabio Sharon wants to engage in some type of wrestling? Yeah, good luck with that. You know, you're going to have to take the man down. Um, he does have some... Uh, he actually, we have no statistic on his takedown average, so fuck that. Excuse my language. Uh, if you look at significant strike landed per minute, it's just massive discrepancy. 15 to 2, and the accuracy 62. I mean, just, he's going to murder him. I think it's going to be a knockout. Um, the fight should not be going a distance. Uh, if you ask me, and I'm feeling type froggy, the fight goes the distance is minus 410. So even the books are projecting the fight should not go the distance. Uh, around over under, even under two and a half is minus 320. Everything for it is telling me that I should take Carlos Olberg by KO. Um, I don't think Carlos Olberg is submitting Fabio Sharon, but we've seen some crazy shit happen. Um, uh, but. Maybe this one, Carlos Oberg, round one KO, TKO, plus 180 is very, very tempting, but I'm a bitch, and I don't want to play that. So, I may want to consider that in a little parlay, uh, but I'm going to just ride with Carlos Oberg. And look, I don't have to squeeze anything with Kyler Phillips. I'm at plus 1333, right? 1333, yeah. All right. Let's continue the journey, guys. Okay. I initially wanted to be like plus 250 on Martinez, and I was going to take that. But then um, everybody is on Ronnie Lawrence, minus 310. And I don't particularly like that. So um, I wanted to see what the round props are. Over 2.5 at minus 180. Decent enough to consider in a parlay, but then you're kind of scared that somebody's going to get knocked out. Uh, but I would put that somewhere in the back of your mind that if you are looking for some kind of parlay piece material, uh, consider uh, playing the over two and a half. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to take Martinez, to be honest, but um, I got talked out of it. Um, and the price is, I don't know. Anyway, Martinez is 5'10". He set, has a two-inch reach advantage. Uh, strikes landed per minute is 4.84. And I would say that if there's any knockout, I kind of favor Mar Mena Martinez, to be honest. Uh, the accuracy is going to be favoring slightly Ronnie Lawrence. But god damn, look at that takedown average. The guy averages over 10 takedowns with a 76 0.92 and everybody is just rolling on that okay and that's where you kind of see the massive um favorite uh favorite position for ronnie lawrence uh because of that number that that's a scary number so mania martinez if he cannot stop that he's in world of trouble now he has trained with uh james kraus and i've been uh, usually favoring uh, fighters that J uh, James Krause teaches because I think he's just a phenomenal MMA uh, coach. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just going to stay away from this fight. Uh, I am considering the over, but... Um, I'm just not brave enough. <laughs> I'm being very honest. I'm just not brave enough. So I was going to skip that fight. Um, but... And you know what? Because I'm an asshole, 
I'm going to still say I like Mayna Martinez in this fight, okay? So my official pick will be Mayna Martinez because I just want to give a big F you to Erev, the whole community that's picking uh, Ronnie Lawrence. And for that's the only simple fact. But um, this 10 is scary as shit. So the over, if, if he's going to be hugging him, I think that's amazing. Uh... Hug him all, of, all, all you want. All you want. The over is phenomenal for me, and I like that very much. And if you look at uh, Ronnie Lawrence, seven and one, um, you know, pretty heavy favorite at this point. He had a phenomenal amateur result. He only lost once to Steve Garcia and Bellator, and ever since then he's been um, doing his thing, thing. Okay, and he had a nice uh, debut against Vince Cachero. So. And he ground and pounded him in the third round. So, look, he always got that over two and a half. Ooh, tempting, right? Anyway, uh, if you look at the breakdown, he has been king oh, four, four times and three wins by decision. So, um, man, Maine is going to be fighting for his life here, okay? Because I'm telling you right now, he does not want to lose this fight. Um, so, you know, a split win against Guido Canetti, who's like 40 some years old right 42 years old so um, yeah not his best performance he got signed with the ufc thanks to this fight right here fury fc dana white picked him up when he saw him beat um uh jose johnson jose johnson so anyway um yeah i'm gonna just for the fun of it i'm gonna say f u m m a community who's backing ronnie lawrence but yeah i mean he should technically win and a good par parlay piece material i don't want to uh talk you guys out of that um to be quite honest okay um yeah uh this is i don't know i have no action in this fight so i don't want to skew you guys over so i'm going to take this out um ronnie lawrence is a good pick according to everybody else almost every capper that i listen to um picking ronnie lawrence to be honest so just because I'm an asshole, don't don't lose your money because of me. So we're moving down. Um, early prelims, and we kind of talked about this one. And then only a few fights left. And um, man, it's a long ass card, huh? Okay, we got AJ Dobson is the next one, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I like AJ Dobson. I'm gonna take a stab on him. I think he's stupid explosive. Um, and he should be getting the job done. AJ Dobson currently is minus 120. Um, because I played AJ Dobson, I'm not going to play it in here with you guys. But don't be surprised um, if he wins. Jacob Malcolm, though, the man has potential. Um, and his biggest weapon is this number right here. It is the 7.84 takedown average. So if he can take down... AJ Dobson and take him into his world where he, where he is comfortable. So if AJ Dobson is on the ground, he's going to be in trouble. However, I am going to bank on this number. I am banking on 8.97, almost 9 sh significant strike landed per minute because this man is explosive. So I'm hoping that, age, that AJ Dobson... And if you look at his fight in the contender, um, if you look at his fight in the contender, he fought this Russian dude, right? Um, Hashem. Well, he, not really Russian. Who? Where is this guy from? Hashem. This guy was from um, Jordan, actually. My, my bad. Anyway, he fought this dude, Hashem Ar Ar Argaga. Is that how you say it? Argaga? Argaga, Argaga, Argaga. Anyway, Argaga, right? Arc, Argaga. So yeah, he fought Argaga, <laughs> and um, you know, who tried to do some wrestling, and you know what? AJ Dobson did a good job in fighting that takedown and defending it quite well, and um, and uh, he rear naked, rear naked, uh, choked uh, the hell out of uh, Hashem. So. Tells me that he's not maybe afraid to go down on the ground. I'm n I've never been very excited about Jacob Malcolm. Um, again, he he did show that he his grit against Abdul uh, Al uh, has, uh, Abdul uh, what's his name Abdul Razak Al Hassan. 
but you know, Hassan has you know just disappointed me more than once, so I'm not too high on that uh, particular win. But I'm gonna go with AJ Dobson to kill uh, AJ uh, to kill Jacob Malcolm here, and um, I told you I have him in a parlay. Uh, somewhere else and you know what I'm gonna put him on him again because I'm gonna squeeze this parlay now I'm gonna kind of rush things really quick um, so forgive me that's because I'm already at 50 minutes as much as I want to play Sergey Mazurov I'm gonna skip this fight because I just don't want to take any part of this fight okay I'm just afraid uh, but based on numbers I would be leaning with the with the Kazakhstan fighter uh, Sergey Morozov, uh, who is going to give me a takedown average of 3.81 versus 0.69. Um, I'm just worried that Douglas Silva can you know, possibly, you know, clip him and clip him really hard. But if you look at the age of um, the Silva, uh, he's 36, approaching 37 in the bantamweight division, which is kind of shaky at this point. At this point, and uh, Morozov is in his prime. In the last five fights, he uh, lost only to Umar Nurmagomedov, who's like a freaking beast. Okay, uh, but besides that, you know his technical wrestling is really, really superb. I did watch that. Um, you know, you know, I gotta go with uh, Morozov. I just don't want to put him in this parlay, although I should. But I just, I, I I'm not gonna do it. Um, then moving on. We got Mike Matea, a.k.a. Blood Diamond. One of Izzy's boys at plus 188 taking on Jeremiah Wells. Everybody likes Wells here. Nobody wants to pick Black Di uh, but the Blood Diamond. Um, I do want to pick it. Haha. <laughs> you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make two parlays with him and without him. Just for fun. Um, and then the William Knight, Maxim Grishan. William Knight comes in 12 pounds over. Uh, you may want to say that's a good thing because he didn't have to suffer. And then Maxim had to suffer. That may have inf affected him. And now there's a slight edge for William Knight. I'm just not going to pick this fight altogether. You can go ahead and do what you got to do. Um, on paper, I think everybody wants to pick Maxim Grishin. And this is why it's the first fight of the evening. You know, uh, The size discrepancy alone is, is enough for me to... Um, to like this, the only thing is, I think William Knight has has the power to take Maxim Christian down, and at that point is um how well is he gonna do when he's fighting on his back uh, against a gorilla? Cause William Knight is a monster. I'm talking about look at this guy. Just the picture doesn't do enough justice on this guy. He's just a beast of a man, thick. Okay, this guy is big. Um, so everybody was picking Maxim Grishin. Now they're kind of having second thoughts. I just don't want to have anything to do with it. So because I have this parlay with plus 188, if I take this out, obviously it goes to... F so what we're going to do is, with the Blood Diamond, we're going to put $25 um, for a pay of $1,800. Uh, why isn't my location verified? Huh. I don't like that. Let's log out. Let's log in. Let's verify the location. And I'm playing out of New York and now I can do this. Okay. Why am I not? Oh, wait a minute. Verify location. And I'm verified now, so I'll be placing $25 with the Blood Diamond. Then I'm going to reuse my selections. And I'm going to unselect the Blood Diamond just in case. And let's go over. Izzy over 4.5. Fingers crossed. Derek Lewis, money line. Fingers crossed. Bobby Green, money line. Casey O'Neill, baby girl, you got to come through on this one. Um, uh, man, I just need that plus. So I'm going to be hoping for that. That's the one that's going to be scaring the shit out of me. Um, Carlos Olberg, minus 245. AJ Dobson. What is $75? It's $1,800. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put $25. No, it's $50. 50 $1,200. And I still have $25 to go. Um, so let me 
put this in. Okay. Done. And now, let's pick the whole card. Um, I would take Grishin, um, because I uh, fucked the whole William Knight situation. Um, let's see if the people are right with, with, with Jeremiah Wells. Although I like Black uh, Blood Diamond, which we already covered. This is just for fun. Um, I told you I like Morozov, so let's take Morozov. I have to pick AJ Dobson, but since I have AJ Dobson, um, we're gonna cover ourselves with a prop. We're gonna go over two and a half to cover because if if there's gonna be a wrestling match, then that favors Jacob Malcolm, and I'd rather take the plus on the over, um, over one, over two and a half. Although I'm scared about that pick, uh, to be quite honest, uh, because if, oof, oof, oh no, um. Mm, yeah, you know what? Let's take that out. Um, let's go under two and a half. I think that's better. Let's go under. Or you know what? I think even better is. Will the fight go to distance? Let's do no and just play safe there. Um, and then. Everybody's on Ron Ronnie Lawrence, so let's go with Ronnie Lawrence. Um, I told you I'm with Carlos. I'm not going to change my pick. Kyla Phillips was the pick. Um, Casey O'Neill was the pick. Arlovsky was the pick. Uh, Bobby Green was the pick. Alex Hernandez, believe it or not, is my pick. Okay. Um, Jared Cannonier versus Derek Brunson. I like Derek Brunson. I'm just going to stay away from this fight altogether. Um, the next one is what? Derek Lewis. And then we're going to finish with Israel Adelsanya for a 13 leg. Um, what does 25 give us? A magical number of 5,000. Fingers crossed. And I'm um, placing it in. That's about it. Um, let's see if it happens. I do have some single plays. Um, considering Derek Lewis as a single play. Carlos Olberg as a single play or a knockout, actually. Um, considering AJ Dobson as a single play. And considering Alex Hernandez as a single play. Is I do want to take Izzy, but Izzy's just too expensive. And I already covered him in a parlay. So, yeah, that's kind of my breakdown. Uh, thank you guys for checking me out. I will be signing off now. Any comments, make sure you let me know. And as always, your boy Scythe Battle Cage is done. Tomorrow is going to be an awesome day. Um, I think the weather is great. I think the vibes are awesome. Got a, got a fresh haircut, you know. So, yeah, let's get this money. Uh, enjoy your night. Don't go heavy on the bankroll. As you can see, I put $100 with you guys. And... um. I put 250 uh, separate, so I have $350 only invested in this thing. Uh, don't blow your bankroll. There's so many more uh, cards. There's a couple of cards in February that we're going to be. We should be killing it, um, but enjoy the uh, card. That's the most important thing. Uh, have fun. Um, yeah, I'm out. Deuces.